Yeah, what is Lisa Mays balls here? Lisa, what is your nerd number? 280. Wow. That's actually really good because the first hundred we reserved for our, our employees and future employees. And since there's only three of us, <laughs> there's a lot of future employees. That's really good. That's really good. Um, I'm just vamping. I'm tap dancing a little bit here. I don't even know how to tap. Uh, and I'm drinking a lot of tea. <clears throat> My voice has been just going on me, but... Well, it's, I know, it's doing all right, right? I'm doing okay. Hopefully tomorrow I won't just be... It's really embarrassing when you start crying and you sound like that. That's horrible. You just got to shoot yourself at that point. How are we doing over there? Um, that's all right. Uh, anybody want to ask me anything? Free time. Yes, sir. What's that? Huh? Oh, King, uh, oh how, how did it feel to have Joss King me? <laughs> um, pretty dope, <laughs> really. I mean, look, I, I think, I, I'm kind of a newbie, honestly. I mean, you know, Joss has been uh, one of the leaders in nerd culture for so long. And, uh, you know, and, and before him yesterday, was anybody here at the Stan Lee panel that we did? Yeah. I mean, I bowed to him. You know, I, I, I really think that there have been so many men and women that have gone before uh, me, certainly, and, and led to kind of breeding and, and giving life to this culture and Comic-Con. So, you know, to be a part of a show like Chuck and have so many people give us so much love and, and uh, identify with nerd culture myself and, and just have this harebrained scheme of, like, I, this is what I want to do. If I'm going to do Comic-Con, this is how I want to do it. Um, and for, oh, you're welcome. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. So it, it's really nice. It feels really cool to, uh, I mean, and by the way, he didn't, forget even that, forget him saying that. You know what says that to me? It says it to me, and I think it says it to you guys when Josh says, you know what, I'm going to come and do a conversation at Nerd HQ. I'm going to come and be there with those guys. That's all I want. That's all I want. I want people to see the vision that we have in just one second. It's not funny at all. That's me. That's actually kind of funny. I'm not going to lie. I love you. Who are you? Oh, I love you. I signed your boobs. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, hold on, hold on. Let me be. Yeah, I know. I know, Mom. Mom, I know. I signed yours first. I know. Never in my life did I ever think I would sign a mother-daughter boob set in one day, but... Lo and behold, I like that you're wearing matching pink nerd tanks as well. You guys were, absolutely, as you should, as you should. Anybody else got a question? Yes, you in the back. You don't have to worry about a mic. It's okay. We're just vamping. Yes. Yes, it did. Yes, yes. I'm sorry, who would I kill, marry, and have sex with between Batman, Wonder Woman, and Han Solo? <laughs> kill, marry, have sex with Batman. Wow. This is Box Canyon. There's no way out of it. Uh, <laughs> wow, where do I even go with this? Um, well, well, okay. I would marry Batman, and here's why. He's stinking rich. I mean, stinking. Um, I mean, it would, it would be nice to have an invisible jet and a lasso in the family, but honestly, that's kind of a novelty. Um, he's never home. I get the run of the house. I get the run of the house. Have fun. Have fun, Bruce. Go. Get out of here. Um, I would... Well, here's the problem. I can't kill Han Solo because he's like my favorite character in Star Wars, so...
so that means I kill Wonder Woman and I make mad, passionate love to Han. That's what I do. If we're being honest, which we are. What else we got? <laughs> yes, you, go ahead, stand up. Stand up. Let everybody see you. Would I like to do more singing roles? Would you like me to do more singing roles? All right, maybe. Uh, yeah, I, I, I would, I would. I mean, I grew up doing a doctor, oh, see, by the way, look, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna beat around the bush here. If people like, if somebody like Joss Whedon ever calls you and says, hey, I'd like you to, you just say yes. You don't even, it doesn't matter. He could say, uh, marry me, you say yes. You know what I mean? Like, it, um, I just think, I mean, honestly, I was, I was in awe. I've been, I found myself, I'll get back to your question, I promise. Um, I tangent sometimes. Um, I, I, I found myself uh, in awe so many times, and I don't know if anybody here ever bothers to look at my face when I'm sitting down here. Maybe you do. Uh, whoa. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that, but thank you. Um, but genuinely, like, I am, uh, and I think a lot of the guys, you know, Damon, was anybody here for Damon and Seth's panel? Really? Yeah. Wasn't that incredibly informative and honest? Like, I, I really mean that. That's not smoke. Like, I, 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 I've known those guys, you know, kind of in passing. They've both been super cool to me in the past. I actually met Seth on the, on the, on the uh, set of, of, of R.J. Berger, of all places. And, uh, and he was telling me, like, like uh, Abraham Lincoln wasn't even shooting yet. He was, like, ramping up for that. It was really cool. But I've sat in awe so many times. Oh, yes? <laughs> oh, this is going to be hilarious. Okay, so in answer to your question, yes. <laughs> yes. And if you come to my panel on Sunday, are you coming to my panel on Sunday? Oh, sucks for you. I do, I, have, I do have the power. It is my event, isn't it? I don't know. If I see you at the HQ, I'll try and give you a more in-depth answer. Or you can watch the video online. Maybe I'll answer that on Sunday. Uh, so here's the thing, guys. Before I get to this, and I promise you I'm going to get to it really, really quick, one of our very gracious partners in Nerd HQ, Intel, um, every time I say this in front of a panel for, for the remainder of our panels today and tomorrow, they're going to match every single dollar that was spent for Operation Smile for these panels. So, so this, is my, this is my due diligence, and this is for Intel, okay? Here you go. Tweet your best photo from Comic-Con for the chance to win a Vizio Ultrabook. Just use hashtag Intel Comic Con moment with your pick to enter. That's what I'm saying. That means they are matching this finance. So let's give it up to Intel right now. All right. <laughs> we'll put it up on the website. You'll see. All right. Without further ado, I'm not even going to name them because there's so damn many of them. And thank God that there are. You know them and you love them. Please welcome to the stage the lovely cast of Grimm. From both sides, from both sides. I don't even know where to go anymore. Plus one. Plus one. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the cast of Grimm, the floor is yours. Oh, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Housekeeping, housekeeping. Our flash, is flash photography allowed during this panel? No. Is video allowed during this panel? No. You're so smart. Okay, who's got the first question? Who's got the power? Who's got the mic? In, nobody, everybody at once. Uh, 
Do we still have somebody? Or you know, still? actually, uh, the volunteers have mics, and they're going to be getting them to people as they raise their hands. So you'll just see them pop up and talk. Or not. Okay. There you go. Um, yeah, I have one question. I was just, unfortunately, I had a chance to go to the Grim panel today in, in Cannes. But I was wondering, Juliet, or I'm sorry, I'm not very good with your real names. Um, <laughs> Is what is going on with the uh, the cat scratch? Will, yeah, you're allowed to say anything. In that I, I'm not. This, yeah, I'm not allowed to say, and and I've actually gotten in trouble because when I get really excited about storylines, it's like the first thing I want to do is tell yeah. everyone. Yeah. So it's you know, as to whether or not she comes out of a coma and whether or not she remembers, uh, okay. you will you will have answers pretty early on into season two, but I can't really say any more than that. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Hello, um, David. Over here on your left, over here on your left. First of all, I would like to thank you for signing my thigh earlier. Thank you. I'll, uh, <laughs> oh, God. I'll always sign a thigh. It's, um, I like to hear a little bit more about That was Jerry this Seinfeld. Thigh signing. Um, secondly, I like the grim fairy tale tales. They're very dark. What are all of your favorite grim fairy tales? I don't care. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not even kidding. I really don't have one, and I don't really care. By I'm the way, like, he's not lying. Anytime anyone answers that, asks that question, he looks at me to answer, and I'm like, No, I, I don't know. Do? And also, it's like I'm so like in, engrossed in our own mythology now. It's like people. I don't even know what fairy tale we're doing. I'm just like, What happens? What am I doing? The, you know, what's Nick going through? So, um, but. I'll answer that with, uh, uh, <laughs> with a straight lie. Oh, Rip Van Stilskin. Oh. Rumpel, Rumpel Van Rumpel Winkle. Rumpel Stilskin and Rip Van Winkle. Who's got the next question? Hi. Back here. Woo! Right here. <laughs> Um, so my question is for all of you, um, and I want to say thank you again for doing this and having the signing earlier. Really appreciate it. Um, my question is, if you could eliminate one fear that you have, what would it be? Fear of death. Remember that weird fear at the end of The NeverEnding Story? I guess that's a little ironic. Oh, <laughs> but um, when he just has to look at himself in a mirror and face your true self. Wow. Yes. Um, something in there. <laughs> Over, over here, hi. <laughs> um, I actually had a question for you about um, just the show in general. Um, I know over the course of the show, Nick has gotten increasingly more badass and more capable of taking out kind of what's attacking him. Um, and I kind of had interpreted that as um, kind of some sort of like grim abilities that you kind of gained over time, over having this like, you know, these grim powers or whatever. Um, is that kind of what you, you were going for? Or is it more supposed to be a product of your training with Monroe and the Well, I, I think that there's a little bit of training going on and a little bit of kind of waking up the DNA, you know, getting a little, you know, actual training sessions. But primarily, my life is awful now. Like, I can't tell anybody anything. And, you know, my mom came back, pretended she was dead for 18 years. Um, my girlfriend, you know, I can't tell her anything. My, my partner's going insane, and I'm lying to him, and I'm lying to her. I hate everything. And I think that kind of got, I'm just angrier, you know? And um, <laughs> I'm meaner, you know? Well, I mean... I would suck at fighting if I really didn't want to fight. And I was like, oh, just, you know, stop hitting me. <laughs> but, but if I was really pissed at someone and pissed at life, you know, you just get better at these things. Yeah. Don't fight, kids. <laughs> um, okay, so my friend and I have this elaborate scenario planned where all the cast, uh, or well, all the characters of Grimm go to Home Depot and um, Nick's like kicking down all the doors in the door section. Monroe's like, 
and trying to get him to pick between two colors of paint that are almost identical. <laughs> Nick's like, I don't know. <laughs> now that's, that's beige, that's beige, that's tan. Tan, beige. <laughs> so I'm kind of wondering what you guys think would happen if all of you guys we're in Home Depot in a random plotless episode. <laughs> so, so sort of like Grimm meets Waiting for Godot. Yes. Oh, okay. You're waiting it for has to be really well go. written for nothing to happen. But I don't think the captain knows what a Home Depot is. <laughs> no idea. He has shoppers at pay retail. I'd be at the information booth. I don't know. I think Juliet would probably be like, where's Nick? I don't, I haven't seen him in a while. Where is he? Wandering around clueless. He's kicking down doors. Yeah. I guess uh, Rosalie would be um, creatively putting things together in different aisles to come up with fix-its. Sure. Uh, <laughs> no, Will would be look, trying to make a beer bong. <laughs> I think I'd be looking for materials to make my cat, Samson, a condo. <laughs> or just making yourself a sandwich out of <laughs> nuts and bolts. And... Or looking for cookies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a sandwich out of sponges. Thank you. Hello, this question is for anybody on the panel. Uh, my question is, um, were any of you attracted to the role because of a background or an interest in fantasy, science fiction, or folklore? And um, if so, how um, it, is that a challenge for your current role, considering your past roles? I definitely have always been a fan of the genre, and I remember reading my grandma's grim uh, fables like from the 30s, you know, just devouring each story, and I just loved the just subversive element I think I knew that really even at a young age, you know, what it was so cool and like I shouldn't be reading it, but it was cloaked in children's stories. But uh, I think my earliest memory of when I really fell in love with just genre was the original Clash of the Titans when that Medusa head, all like jerky and animatronic and like snakes coming out, you know, uh, I was like, God, oh, so cool. So I, yeah, I'm happy to be here. I was really excited because, you know, when I got the audition, I, they told me I was reading for Nick. And I said, oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> and then I get there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm Nick. I'm the guy playing Nick. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm Chris Fallen. <laughs> I was very excited because, um, you know, it was something so different than what you see when you go through scripts in pilot season. And it had a real identity to it, and, and you want to do a show that's first well-written, and we have Jim Kyle and David Greenwald, and they're just brilliant writers, and they've done a really good job of creating, I mean, taking these stories that have been passed down for generations, and uh, turning it into its own identity, and that's really hard to do, and you don't even notice it, because it's done so well, so, um, you know, knowing the kind of the pedigree of the creators and the executive producers really got me excited to be involved. I was not a, a fairy tale. Uh, I didn't grow up on on Grimm's fairy tales. I grew up on, um, well, there was a there was a, a book called uh, Slovenly Peter, which I've talked about, which has these cautionary tales that are very very dark, um, and it was something that always sort of caught my attention. But m that was sort of ancillary to me. More what was, the, the, was Monroe was just a cool character. Like I read it, and I was like, this is cool because I don't know what it is. Who is this guy, and what makes him tick, and what is he doing, and he's a what from where, and he does this thing. And so anything that makes you kind of lean forward and sort of read more deliberately is pretty rare, you know? So that was a big one for me, just like I didn't know what it was. You've also said something cool about the relationship dynamic, how it's different than everything else. Oh, yeah. I don't want to steal that from yeah, you, no, so well, won't you? Well, I, I, when I read it, I said, we, we've seen... You know, uh, cop with partner, cop with wife, cop with, you know, uh, we haven't seen cop with Blutbot. <laughs> so I was like, oh, let's try that. And, oh, 
Uh, next question. <laughs> going on, a lot of that, a lot of the same. Uh, wonderful people, wonderful, unique storylines, and uh, just an opportunity to, you know, dive into a world of imagination. Yeah, I think it's, you know, I think we're, we're as actors, we're ultimately trying to get to become real, and then we find this world where we're not familiar with it at all, so it's this opportunity to kind of stretch it that much further, which is like a gift for us. So, yeah, that. And, and as, as Russell had said he was reading for Nick, I was actually reading for Hank. <laughs> <laughs> and then Reggie you wake Lee, up. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Next question, right hey. over here. Hey, what's up, guys? First of all, I want to say thank you to all you guys for the signing earlier. You guys were really personable and awesome, and I speak for everybody. We really appreciated that. Oh, thank you, guys. Nice rock. And, love you guys. Woo! And thanks, Zachary, too. The Polish guy. Oh, see? That's what I mean. Right there, Sasha. All day. I, I don't forget. Um, so my question is for all you guys. just want to know, uh, how would you guys like to see each of your characters develop in the next season? How, how do we see them? Yeah, how would you, how would you like, like to, to see them, them develop? Oh. Yeah, if it was up to you guys. I think we have to answer that question a little bit carefully because the showrunners are here. <laughs> I know that you know all the Grimsters have sort of been lovingly referring to it as the Scooby Gang, which I think is really, really cool. And I, I mean, I think it'd you be kind it of fun there now. to what? No, I know, I know. See, that's I know who doing. you are. <laughs> we, we all have to shut up now. Oh, it's what? the kid. No, I didn't even. <laughs> okay, good. Um, um, did I cut her off? No, I mean, I, I just think it would be uh, fun to sort of get, get to, you know, fight crime and kick butt and, 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 and have some more animals around me because that's more always guns. fun. More guns? More, yes. <laughs> Anyone else? I love cookies. It's, you know, <laughs> more cookies. <laughs> Hey everybody, hi. Um, what, what I'd like to first say is I can't wait for next season. You guys are awesome, it's my favorite show. Um, <laughs> um, what is your favorite fairy tale creation and creature have you seen this uh, past season and what would you like the writers to put into future seasons for you? Mercy, I thought the Murcielago was badass. I thought it just looked really good. I thought the concept was really good. Um, and also, uh, there's digital, and then there's physical. And the Murcielago, for whatever reason, I don't know, I know it takes a very long time, but somehow they managed to shoot that the, 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 that creature was an actual physical thing. And you can enhance it digitally, but it just looked freaking awesome. Yeah. 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 My favorite morph uh, is the Hex and Beast myself. I just love the ashy hair, the skin that pales, it just such a creepy face. I just think it's such a gorgeous morph. You know, it's pretty flawless on the show. I'm very scary. I'm partial to the ice beavers because they're cute and round and friendly. <laughs> yeah, the good guys. As far as like moving forward, I don't know what I want to. I, I like watching the characters that we've invited into the world kind of like hang out together, see what happens, who. Who hates each other? Who lo it's like it's like a menagerie. Know, it's like a reality yeah, we all show. just get along. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely the sex and beasts. I like them. I like them. I like them a lot. I like more than one at a time. He likes them too much. So my, my, my question for you guys is my this is what my wife and I do on Friday nights is we watch Grimm first of all. But uh, I know it's filmed in Portland. I'm out in Portland all the time. What do you guys like about Portland? I've never seen you in Portland, dude. <laughs> Ever. And he is always out. I'm always out. <laughs> I, I, there's nothing Next I don't question. like about Portland. What do we like about Portland? The well, food. Food, <laughs> food. Well, it's so well put together. You know, like I come from LA, it's just kind of like, What's happening? Where am I? And then you get there, it's like, these streets are in alphabetical order. And it's just, it's so livable, and people are so lovely and friendly. And of course, it's just cinematically gorgeous. You can't really beat that town for that. Yeah, the summers are in HD. It's so beautiful and clear. <laughs> so true. 
<laughs> I know my pharmacist by name. And, and they, like, it's, that's how it is. Everywhere I go, it's like, hey, you know, hey, hey. Like, I've never had that in, uh, I get a lot of prescriptions. <laughs> Maybe that's a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got him in pharmacist down. apothecary uh, dealer. But did I say pharmacist? Um, but I, Euphemism it's alert. It's a very friendly town is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> you mean that guy on the corner? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah Joe, the pharmacist. Yeah, Joe. Yeah, Joe. He's a great guy. Yes, sir, right here, right in front. Shooting around Forest Park and all the areas you guys have been in, it just really gives that ambience to the show. I think that's really awesome. So, really great. And I really appreciate showrunners for choosing Portland. It's really awesome. Thank you so much. We, love, we really do love it there. I really like how they use the names to reflect some of the characters, like Reynard, meaning Fox. And I'm looking forward to seeing what your character looks like. And with Nick, you find out later in life that you're a Grimm and you have those abilities and it freaks you out. And I'm waiting for when Hank finds out he really is a Griffin and does that freak him out even more? <laughs> well, as it stands right now, you know, I see Jerry Mathers, he sees the beef. So that's just what we're gonna work exactly out. Exactly right. because I lived in Portland for a little while and it's a very interesting and, as you said, put, well put together city, but I was just wondering if you felt that the city kind of adds another aspect or character because of the weather and, and just the culture around it? Without a doubt, without a doubt. In fact, like the, the Grimm's fairy tales were um, largely set in the Black Forest in Germany. And one of our showrunners, Jim Kauf, just went there um, and he's like, you know, it's, you can't tell the two forests apart. It, it's such a wonderful surrogate for the Black Forest in Germany. Yeah. You know, and it's got that dark, where are we kind of yeah. vibe. Yeah, and trees make the best trees, you know? You can't fake <laughs> trees, you know? Yeah. Hi. My question is for Bitsy. Your character is a veterinarian. You have no animals, why not? Um, well, actually, uh, I would say, I think, you know, not everybody knows this, but in the pilot episode, Juliet was a baker. And then I think I was talking ad nauseum about my, my French bulldog so much that I, that had to have influenced them somehow. But I, I don't think vets tend to have that many animals because, oh, they do. They do. Guys? <laughs> <laughs> I work for a non how, how do you know we don't have animals? Maybe we do. Maybe there's some underneath. You haven't seen any. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we will. Ooh. <laughs> Hi. Uh, my question. Um, so my question is, um, how much work does it take to actually get the whole morphing and stuff on the faces when you guys are doing those scenes? It, it takes about eight hours. Um, be, yeah, because they go very deliberately. You know, it's one of those things where it's, it's, it's a sort of a weird experience to, to have all this stuff applied. Um, you know, the story of, of when Jim Carrey was, was playing the Grinch, uh, he had to go through, he was in the chair for, you know, 10 hours or something most of the days. So just a long time. And one day he just kind of got up out of the chair and was like, give me this thing. Ah! And he just ran around and was like, get this crap off of me. So you have to go very slowly. If you rush it, it creates this sense of like claustrophobia. So it seems like a long time, um, but you have to kind of, uh, if you try to rush it, it just makes it all the worse. Um, so yeah, it takes a long time. I've only done it once because it takes so long, it would add like a whole nother, you know, if every time I morphed, I actually got into the stuff, it would add like weeks to an episode. Um, but it's long, it's long and arduous, but the, the, the guys know what they're doing. They make it easy. Hi, um, I'm a huge Grand fan and my love for the shirt. 
<laughs> and um, I, I just want to say that uh, David and Silas, you guys have like the best bromance since Perfect Strangers. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Balky there? <laughs> I, in this scenario. I kind of I kind of think you're like the Balkan, he's like the Larry. <laughs> I'm Balky? Oh, Where I, is this person? Nothing again. Ah, there Balky. you are. Hi. I am cousin Larry in this. What are you saying? <laughs> and I'm um, Reggie. I really like your one-liners and I hope you continue to have more one-liners cuz you have I I mean, I love that you're playing the cop and then I saw you on Crazy Stupid Love and you just have the best one-liners and I want to see more of um God, I want more Russell, and I love that Bree is 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 in it Series has regular more now. flavor into to, to the show. You're so kind. And Betsy, yeah. I really love you too. And I just and I, and Shasha, thanks for taking a picture with me. I just no, no that's problem. all I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think I think the guy in the vest has to be Valky. I mean, if we're just, I don't think there's a choice in the man. <laughs> All right. Um, hi. Thank you, guys. We love you. Um, it's a great show. Uh, yeah, I'm so excited that Bree's a regular this season. So are we. So I actually have a question for Monroe, um, for Silas, and for... <laughs> Are we ever going to get to see more badass Monroe, and are we ever going to get to see Monroe and Renard interact? Oh, that's a good question. We've never worked together. We, we like, we're like ships passing in the night. <laughs> Across a crowded soundstage. Uh, badass. Yeah, I think the chance for, I think the chance for, for for Monroe badass is, is pretty high. I mean, I honestly don't know if they're, you know, but I think that it's, you know, it's the dark side is there. Maybe we can use the dark side for good, you know? That's what I'm thinking, but who knows? I'm pretty sure we'll work together at some point. <laughs> Jim, 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 no. Is that in your rider? Is that in your rider? Is that in your contract? What? We're not, yeah. No. <clears throat> At some point. We, we got time for uh, maybe two more questions. Maybe two more. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Yes, uh, uh, who's got that? You have the power, ma'am, with the green hair. Okay. Um, I like, first, I'd like to say that I really love the show. And, oh, sorry. First, like, I really love the show. And I didn't make it to the signing this morning. And they said, like Zach said, for one of the extra posters to try and give it to the girl with the green hair. But I didn't get one. You still didn't get one? Because there are a few floating we, around. Yeah, we signed them for you guys. For the, for the, I think there were 30 people who didn't get them. Okay. So yeah. But it, did you get one? If you didn't get one... Um, I just did you literally did. just get one? Uh, yeah, she just... <laughs> Done. Uh, you can keep Boom. it. It's fine. I was, I, I Boom. Didn't. Like that. Pay it forward. Okay. Um, Lightning. So what, my... else, what else would you like? A puppy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what else can we get for you? Um, my question was going to be if I could either get a shout out or a hug, because both would work very well. And well, yes. like a big I like group. a whole shout out to the girl with the green hair. Yeah. We, we, we will surround you. Yeah. We'll surround you with that. grim love. I love it. Can I come up there then? Or? Yes. Hey, come on, bring you it. Can. Come on up. Because a shout out, I don't know how that would work. Like, hey, you. Here we go. Hey, you with the green hair. Hugs all around. Hugs all around. <laughs> Doves every and break. We all have each other's illness now. We just took your soul, you know, so Purell, anybody? I'm gonna you live might forever. start acting a little differently now. Last question, folks, make it count. I don't know. Just, no pressure, no pressure. <laughs> It's all on you, man. Okay. Hello? Okay, it is on. Uh, same question? No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> that was a one-time only offer. You said make it count, so I figured I would try. Uh, it would count for me, at least. Um, <laughs> this is for Sasha. Um, how does it feel playing a bad-slash-good guy? <laughs> 
<laughs> same as it does every day in my life. Um, it's, it's great. It's, it, walking that tightrope is always more fun, I think. You know, you just, you, you never know as an audience which side he, he's going to play on. And, and it's, it's fun for me because I'm, I'm often left surprised, too. So um, it's, been, it's been a great slow reveal, and there's some great stuff coming up as well, which will make you think again. Ladies and gentlemen, please keep your hands clapping for the cast of Grimm. Thank you. Thank you, guys. You guys are awesome. Keep it going, everybody. Keep Thank it going. Thank you so much. If you, you guys go ahead and go off that way. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Keep it going, guys. Keep it going. They're still in the building. Keep it going, people. That's enough. <laughs> Milking it. Was that fun? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you guys are awesome. I'm so, uh, all right, thank you. Thank you. I'm so tired, I could pass out right now. No, actually, you know what, though? I, I got to tell you, it, and I was talking to, uh, <laughs> name drop, Joss Whedon earlier. <laughs> and uh, was, was anybody here for the Joss panel? I'm just gonna say this one thing and then I gotta get you guys all out of here. Uh, but I love you. But we just, I, God, see this, but this is, what I'm this is what I was about to say. So at the Joss panel, he was talking about how, how he's a workaholic, how he suffers from workaholism and, uh, or something like that. And, uh, but he said, you know, when you're working with really amazing people, it just energizes you. Like you can keep working, you can keep working, you can keep working. And I gotta tell you, Something I experienced last year, and, and one of the biggest reasons why I, I, I wanted to with all of my heart, and I knew I could do this again this year, was because no matter how dead tired and exhausted and, and no voice I may have, you guys have so much love to give every panel that comes up here, and I feel that love too, and I just want to thank you so much from the bottom of my heart, so thank you. Thank you. You keep me going. You keep us going. Thank you. Um, we're going to have you guys... Uh, stand up and exit out the 6th Street side. Uh, I might see you at an, uh, a panel uh, later or tomorrow. I hope I do. And if not, please continue to hang out at Nerd HQ. It's your place. Thank you, guys. Goodbye.